thine hand made. Thou hast loosed my bond. I will pay my vows unto the Lord now in the presence of all his people. Let us read together. In the course of the Lord's house, in the midst of the old Jerusalem, praise ye the Lord. Let's remain standing as we sing together with joy. We've come this far by faith. Let's sing together. We've come this far. We've come this far by faith. Leaning on the Lord. Trusting in his holy word. He never failed me yet. Oh, Sister Emma Bembry will come and bring us our announcements. Good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. The announcements are: Please join Pastor Rain's prayer tomorrow morning and every mon Monday morning at 6:30 for our prayer line service. And it starts at 6:30, and the number is in the bulletin. And on Wednesday. Uh, prayer meditation and Bible study starts at 6.30 and Bible study starts at 8. And next Saturday will be our church fall cleaning. 
uh, I'm not sure what time Sister Connie is asking everybody to be here, but it's next Saturday. And there's been a time, a change in time for the winter fall clothing drive, which is October 5th, which will be from 10 to 2, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. If you mark your calendar, change that. And the women's conference on Saturday, October 19th, will be at 9.30. So please take your bulletin home so you'll be aware of all the other changes and the upcoming events for our church. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Thank you, Sister Emma. To all our friends and family who are joining us by way of Facebook Live, live stream, and conference call, we say good morning to you. We're so glad you could join us today for this time of worship. God has been good to all of us. No matter where you are, if you're here in the United States, if you're some other part of the world, we're serving the same God. And look, y'all, he's been good, mighty, mighty good to us. Amen. He's been so good. To, we've made it safely through another week. I think God deserves your praise. Amen. Amen. So we thank all of you for joining us today. I got a question for y'all. Is West Hyattsville in the house? Amen. Is West Hyattsville in the house? Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning, West Hyattsville. So good to see all of you here today. God has brought us together once more for this time of worship and praise. It's nothing like being in the house of the Lord, y'all. It's nothing like it. Nothing like it. Nothing like being together as God's family in the house of the Lord. And so we are so glad to be here on this day. Again, uh, just to emphasize the uh, closing drive, which will be on uh, the 5th, October 5th. Uh, we have asked now that uh, Sister Emma Presley will lead that effort. Come on, let's give, Emma, let's give her a round of applause. <laughs> Sister, <laughs> you know, now you you know, you know Anna, you know, she'll put her own stuff into it, okay? <laughs> but please come around, uh, Anna, give her the assistance that she needs. I want to thank uh, um, Sister Shirley Gaddy. Uh, for leading it, and then Sister Margaret uh, also for leading it. And now Sister Anna is going to jump on board and lead our closing drive. If you have clothes that's got too small for you, <laughs> now, the, the clothes got small. Uh, it, nothing happened to you. You know, the clothes got small. If <laughs> If the clothes got small and you're not wearing it any longer, it's in good shape, please bring it. Guess what? Somebody out here can use it. Amen. 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 And we do that every year. Our clothing uh, drive blesses people. We have one in the spring, and then we have one in the fall. Amen. So if you have any clothing that you're no longer using, please bring that, bring that to us, and, uh, uh, and we will make that a part of our clothing drive. Looking forward to blessing the many lives that will be blessed on that day. Amen? Amen. Come on, let's welcome back Sister Olivet. <laughs> she was in Liberia for a number of, of months, actually, <laughs> a number of months. But as, as I told uh, uh, the, the, the participants on the call, even though she was in Liberia, that's four or five time zones away, Olivet called in every Wednesday to be a part of our, uh, uh, our meditation and be a part of our Bible study. And now she has flown back to us, and we thank God for her presence here. Good to see you, all of it. Good to see you, and pray that God will continue uh, to bless you. Let us continue, my brothers and sisters, to have a good time in this service today. We thank God again for bringing us together. So let us enjoy our time together as we are now led in music by our music ministry. be in the house of the Lord this morning? Yes. The song says, I get joy when I think about the Lord. Does anybody in the house in the morning feel joy when they think about the Lord and all that he's done for you? I want us to shout this morning and sing into his name. So please join in the worship with us this morning.
Oh. 
you to take a trip down memory lane and think about all that God has done for you. And when you think about how good he has been, my brothers and sisters, I declare you will have to have some joy that's bubbling up in your soul because God has blessed you right where you were. Nobody else saw what you were going through, but God saw it and he blessed you and delivered you. And because of that, when you think about it every now and then, you ought to shout hallelujah. You ought to shout praise the Lord because of what the Lord has done for you. I, I have, from time to time, I've gotten some looks when I'm driving. And I start thinking about what <laughs> the Lord has done for me. And I'm behind the wheel and cars around me. And they start doing one of these numbers. <laughs> and someone looks, is he all right? Yes, he's all right. <laughs> I'm just giving God thanks for what he has done for me. Yeah, I think it was the Apostle Paul who said, I think myself happy when I think of what he has done for me. And nothing wrong with having some joy. Amen? Amen. As we come now to this moment of prayer, I received a text uh, this morning from our dear sister Mary Chair. And Mary informed me that uh, a, uh, a relative of, of hers came down to, to Maryland uh, over the weekend for a wedding, and she took ill uh, yesterday. And so this morning she is in a doctor's hospital. So let's keep Mary and her family uh, in prayer as they go through this moment of, um, of illness. People getting sick everywhere. You know, sometimes you don't expect things to happen before you know it. Someone who was up yesterday is down today. In fact, someone who was up today is down today. Amen. Amen. So let's pray because God is a healer. Anyone here know he's a healer? Uh, yeah. Anybody here know that he will fix what is broken? That's the God that we serve. Let's continue to pray for the family of the late Robert Gibson, a very permanent individual in the Liberian community. Pray that God would be with them in this that time of bereavement. There are others of us who are going through uh, illness and, and, and bereavement and, and difficult, difficult. These are difficult days. These are trying times. What did the poet say? These are times that try our soul. So let's pray for all those who are going through difficult circumstances. Know this, my brothers and sisters, there's nothing too hard for God. Amen. You remember when, when, uh, uh, when, when, when God said that, that, that Sarah, uh, uh, Abraham's wife, was going to have a baby. You remember what Sarah did? She laughed, right? And when she laughed, and God said, I saw you laughing. I saw you. No, I didn't laugh. Yeah, I saw you laughing, Sarah. And he asked her, is there anything too hard? <laughs> it's a, it was a rhetorical question. Uh, but is there any too? The answer is there's nothing too hard for God. So bring whatever it is you have to him and know that he can work it. He can solve whatever problem you give to him. With God, all things are possible. Many of us sitting in this congregation know for ourselves that with God, nothing is impossible. If you're here today and you have a special prayer request on your heart, a special prayer concern, we ask you to stand where you are and we will pray with you. Uh, Deacon Stephen Nessai will now come and lead us in this moment of prayer. And again, if you have a special request, talk to God right now. I got news for you. He's here. God is here right now. Why don't you talk to him right now as we go to him in prayer? Trust him. 
Not for one thing. Trust him for all things. And he will hear your prayer. Take him silent. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you. We give you glory. We give you honor and all the praise. Father, we ask you this morning, first of all, wherever we have wronged you, in our thoughts, in our words, and in our deeds, we ask for your forgiveness as we approach your throne of grace to obtain mercy. We thank you for all that you have done and all that you are still doing. Father God, this morning we lift up first the sick and the shut in. Father God, you know them, each of them, name by name and one by one. Father, visit hospitals, visit nursing homes, visit hospices, visit homes. Wherever there are sick people, Father God, we ask you to go there. We ask you to touch them from the crown of their head to the soles of their feet. Let your healing power flow through their bodies, Father God. Destroy cancer. Destroy diabetes. Destroy hypertension, kidney failure. Father God, you know all that ail your people. Father, we ask you to touch, destroy, and make them whole again. We thank you because we know that you are God that answers prayer. Father, we lift up all the bereaved families to you. Father God, we ask you to comfort them. Wrap your arms around them during this difficult time. Father God, you said in your word that earth has no sorrow that heaven cannot heal. Father God, Touch and heal those broken hearts at this time. We thank you. We praise you because we know that you hear us. Father God, now we lift up these United States to you. Father God, we lift it up to you. We lift up this country, Father. Come, Jesus, come. Turn everything around that is not right, Father God. Turn it around. Let it be today, Father God. Father God, nothing is too difficult for you to do. Father, we ask you to guide this whole process. Guide November 5th, O oh God. Father God, let everything go better than planned. Father God, every plan of the enemy for this country, we cancel with the blood of Jesus. Every evil scheme that is being plotted behind closed doors, Father God, we, we bring it to nothing in the name of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against the people of these United States will prosper. And every lying tongue will be condemned. Father God, we thank you for these candidates, oh God. We ask you to continue to surround them with your angels. Continue to protect them from the plans of the evil ones. Father God, and we say, let your will be done in, on November 5th, Lord. Let your will be done. We thank you for peace. We thank you for what you're going to do. Father, now we lift up our leaders of this church to you. We lift up Pastor Ringsbury and his family. I ask you to continue to surround them with your angels. Continue to protect and provide for them. Continue to give Pastor wisdom as he writes rightly divide your word oh God give him insight as he brings the word today father we lift up the 
uh, um, the ministers on the roll, Reverend Wright and Reverend Wright. I ask you to continue to protect and guide them, provide for them. Father, we lift up the deacons to you. I ask you to continue to give them wisdom on how to they interact with the members, oh God. We thank you for the trustees. We thank you for the ushers. We thank you for the musicians and the choir. We thank you for the membership. We thank you for our new members. We thank you for what you're going to place on their hearts and how they're going to participate in ministry we thank you. thank you father you are worthy of all our praise today we just give you glory for another day that you have allowed us to see and we say let your will be done in this day and not the will of the evil ones in jesus name we pray amen us to remember in our prayers, um, I forgot to mention it during, uh, before Deacon Stephen had, um, came up, let us remember the Haitian community uh, in a city called Springfield in the state of Ohio. Here are people who have left a land of violence in search of peace. But now they have been caught up in some kind of, only word I can think of is drama. And that drama is causing trauma to parents and even to children. Lives are being threatened. Schools, government buildings, all manner of life has been disrupted because somebody decided to tell a story that has not been verified. I'm, I'm trying to be nice and not say they lied. <laughs> I'm trying to use appropriate language if I can. And as a result of that, these people are, uh, of the Haitian community are fr afraid to go out, afraid to go to work. The employers have commended them for being hard workers. The mayor of the city has admitted that the economy of Springfield has improved <laughs> because of these Haitians. But somebody decided to throw into the narrative something happening to cats and dogs. And before you know it, everywhere from all around this country and even across, even around the world, are calling and threatening these people. Please pray for them. Because for those of us who have come from other countries, we know or we remember the challenges that we had when our character was maligned and, and people made assumptions about us and would not come close to us. We stayed away 
from us. So I cannot even begin to imagine what these people are going through. But I tell you what I can do. I can pray for them and lead them in God's care. We pray for a peaceful process as we are only a few days away now from voting for the next president of these United States and leaders of government. Please, my brothers and sisters, if you have not yet registered to vote, please do so as quickly as possible. If you need information, go to V-O-T-E dot G-O-V, vote dot gov, G-O-V-E dot G, I'm sorry, V-O-T-E dot G-O-V, vote dot gov. And every piece of information that you need is there. Amen? Amen. To make a change, you've got to be a part of the change. Amen. Amen. Reverend James Wright will come and read our scripture. The mill chorus will sing for us, and then I will return for this morning's sermon. Good morning, family. Good morning. Our scripture this morning will be coming from the Old Testament in the book of Malachi. And I'll read for our hearing verses. 6 through 12, and I'll be reading from the King James Version of the Bible. And it reads thusly, For I am the Lord, I change not. Therefore you sons of Jacob are not consumed. Even from the days of your fathers, you are gone away from mine ordinance, and have not kept them. Return unto me, and I will return unto you, saith the Lord of hosts. But you said, wherein shall we return? Will a man rob God? Yet you have robbed me. But you say, wherein have we robbed thee? In tithes and offerings. You are cursed with a curse, for you have robbed me, even this whole nation. Bring you all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in mine house. Improve me now herewith, says the Lord of hosts, if I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that there shall not be room enough to receive. And I will rebuke the devourer for your sakes, and he will not destroy the fruits of your ground, neither shall your vine cast her fruit before the time in the field, says the Lord of hosts. And all nations shall call you blessed, for you shall be a delightsome land, saith the Lord of hosts. The word of God for God's people be blessed.
that when God asks us to go that we should answer I'll go and that God has promised that he will show us the way uh, you remember in Isaiah I believe it was Isaiah chapter 6 when God said who shall I send and who will go for us and Isaiah said here amen here am I send me. Amen? Amen. Amen. Thank you for reminding us of that. I want to thank Reverend James Wright for reading our scripture for this morning, Malachi chapter 3. Let's go back to that passage. He read from verses 6 to 12. I would like to read from verses 8 to 10 for the sake of emphasis. Malachi chapter 3 verses 6 to 12, reading verses 8 to 10. If you have it, say amen. Amen. Malachi 3, beginning at verse 8. And I'm reading from the New International Version of the Bible. Will a mere mortal rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? 
in tithes and offerings. You are under a curse, your whole nation, because you are robbing me. Bring the whole tithe into the storehouse, that there may be food in my house. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty, and see if I will not throw open the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not be room enough to store it. I want to talk about the journey from curse to blessing. The journey from curse to blessing. As you have probably observed, the book of Malachi is the last book of the Old Testament in the Bible that we have today. Malachi is one of the Old Testament books known as the Minor Prophecies. They are called Minor Prophecies not because of the quality of their content, but because of the length of their content. To whom were these messages addressed in this book of Malachi? The prophecy of Malachi was addressed to a people who had the infamous distinction of being disobedient and unrepentant. Through the prophet of Malachi, these messages were preached to those who were proud to be called God's chosen people, but they refused to follow God's law. They boasted about the prestige and notoriety, but, but they neglected to maintain a good relationship with God and with their fellow brothers and sisters. Let, let me... Let me throw this in, my brothers and sisters. If, if we are going to be called children of God, there must be some evidence Amen. Uh, that we are in a relationship uh, with God. We, we used to sing a song uh, a long time ago. Anybody ask you who I am, do what? Tell them I'm a child of God. But then someone else sang a song many years ago and said, if you are a child of God, you ought to show some sign. Amen. In Malachi chapter 3, God told his people that he would take steps to bring them back into a relationship with him. The priests would be refined and the people would be given an opportunity to return to God and be restored in a right relationship with him. Look, look if you will, at Malachi chapter 3, verse 7. God says to them, uh, uh, ever since the time of your ancestors, you have turned away from my decrees and have not kept them. Return to me, and I will return to you, says the Lord Almighty. But you ask, how are we to return? It is good news, my brothers and sisters, that regardless of how far we have drifted away from God, he still reaches out to us and invites us to return unto him. God has more than enough mercy and grace to look beyond our fault and see our need, our need for redemption and our need for restoration. Amen, amen. God said to his people, return to me and I will return to you. They asked him, God, how shall we, how are we to return to you. Now look at how God answers 
this question in the next verses. The first thing he tells them, look at verse 8. Mm -hmm. The first thing he tells them, my brothers and sisters, in his people returning to him, the first step is recognize the problem. Amen. Recognize the problem. In verse 8, we read, will a mere mortal rob God? Or if you have the King James, it says, will a man rob God? Yet you rob me. But you ask, how are we robbing you? He responds with what? In tithes Amen. and Amen. offerings. God tells them, you are, in verse 9, you are under a curse, mm -hmm. the whole nation, because you are robbing me. Let's look at four words in verses 8 and 9. First is the word rob. What does it mean to rob? To rob someone is to take something that doesn't belong to you. Amen. Amen. To unlawfully take it by force from a person or a place, something that does not belong to you. The second word we see is the word tithe. The word tithe from the Hebrew means a tenth. In biblical times, it was a tenth of the harvest that, that, that the people brought because they lived in an agricultural-based culture. Amen. If we were to apply this principle to our day, that would be 10% of our income. Now, let's look at the word offering. The word offering means to, to, to have, a, 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 it's a contribution, it is a gift, it is something that yes, someone yes. gives, not under obligation, but gives freely. Amen. Amen. And then fourth is the word curse, which is a pronouncement, a declaration mm -hmm. of evil. Amen. So what was God accusing his people of doing? Mm -hmm. And what was the consequences of their actions. They were robbing God. They were taking from God the first fruits of their harvest, and that fruit, that tithe, that percentage belonged to God. They skimmed off the top and took what belonged to God and used it on themselves. Amen. Amen. How were they doing this? They were neglecting to bring the tithe and offering into the house of God, into the temple, into what we call today the church. Mm -hmm. It is possible that they were taking what should have been brought to church, mm -hmm. brought to the temple, and using it on themselves. And God said to them, you are robbing me. No, you don't have guns. You don't have uh, any weapons to call it an armed robbery. But because you are taking something for yourself that you should have brought to the temple, God says you are robbing me. You are satisfied with the life I have given you, but you are robbing me. You are satisfied with the job I have given you, but you are robbing me. You are satisfied with the resources I have given you, but you are robbing me. You are satisfied with the good help I've given you, but you are robbing me. You are satisfied with the joy and peace I have given you, but you are robbing me. My people, you are robbing me by refusing, by neglecting to bring your time. And your offerings, which belong to me. Amen. And now because you have refused mm -hmm. or neglected to give me what's mine, yes, you are cursed Sentinel. with a curse. That's what God was, that's what God was telling his people. Amen. My brothers and sisters, I pray that we do not refuse or neglect yes. to give God. What belongs to him Amen. to give to God what he has required for us to give. It is one thing to decide yeah. not to give to one another, but it is totally another matter to hold on to what belongs to God. In 1 Chronicles chapter 29, verse 14, we read David's prayer of praise when bringing gifts into the temple. In this prayer, David said to God, but who am I 
and who are my people that we should be able to give generously at this. Everything comes from you. And we have given you what comes from your hand. We may recognize that as we say all things come unto thee. O Lord, and all thine own, what have we given thee? If you are going to move from a curse to a blessing, Israel, then this is what you have to do. You've got to recognize the problem. And the problem, Israel, is you are robbing me. You want to know the answer? You ask the question how? In tithe and in offerings. Amen. You're taking it for yourself yes, sir. when you should be bringing it to me. Amen. That's what God was saying to Israel. But the second observation I would like to lift up in this text today, in, in, in a journey from a curse to a blessing, God not only t told them to recognize the problem, but he also told them to receive the principle. Amen. Receive the principle. Look at verse 10, first part of verse 10, 10a. Mm -hmm. What is the principle, James? He said, Bring the whole tithe Amen. into the storehouse Amen. that there may be food in my house. Now notice in the verse, God told them to bring the whole tithe. I believe in the King James it says, bring ye all the tithe. They, they must not fall short in giving to God what he has asked them for. They must keep they must keep. The entire commandment, they must bring to God the 10%, the 10th that he required them to bring. And here's the good news. You can keep the 90%. Amen. Amen. Bring me 10% and you can keep 90%. Amen. Why, why, God, why should we bring the tithe? Who is getting hot in here? Why should we bring the tithe? He says, that there may be food in my house. You see, in Israel, the people brought uh, the tithe or the tenth of the harvest to be stored in the temple, in an area of the temple called the storehouse. These items were brought to support the priests and the Levites. Those who were serving God. Why? Because these priests, these Levites had no other jobs. Amen. Their inheritance was what God gave them. The items brought, the items that the citizens of Israel brought was also brought to meet the needs of those who are poor Amen. in the community. So the tithes and offerings were not just brought for the sake of storing up for you to look at it and say, man, we got a lot of money. Amen. Oh, we got a lot of stuff. You know, some people boast. Some, <laughs> some churches boast of how much they have, you know, and how big their, 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 their storehouses are. That's all well and good. But it's there for a reason. Yes, sir. Proclaim. How does this apply to us today? My brothers and sisters, when we support our church, Amen. we can meet our financial obligations, Amen. but we are also empowered to meet the needs of those who are the least, the last, and the left out. Amen. The church is not an island to itself. Amen. We are a part of a community. Yes, we take care of ourselves. Yes, we take care of our property. But we also assist the community. And that is made possible when we support our church. One of the most memorable experiences I had, I've had here at uh, West Hyattsville one Sunday after church. Um, I think most of you had left. It was... Uh, Deacon Brown and uh, the financial staff in the back and myself. And Deacon Brown came to me and said, uh, Pastor, there's a lady out here want to see you. Woo. 
I said, uh, really? Yeah. What she looked like? <laughs> Did she tell you her name? No, pastor. The woman says you won't see you. So I came out of the office. I met her right about where Yata is sitting. Never seen her before. She said, you the pastor? Yes, ma'am. And she said to me, a few years ago, this church helped me. My children and I were struggling. And this church helped us get through a rough time. I said, yes, ma'am. I almost shouted. And she said, I've come today to bring you this little gift to say thank you. The lady put $200 cash in my hand and said, I just want to say thank you. So, so I asked her, I said, how are you doing? Oh, she said, we're fine now. Amen. That's why I'm able to bring this thank you gift back to the church. Because when I was struggling with my children, the church stepped up and said, we will help you. And because you helped me, now I'm able to come back and give you some money. Somebody ought to be glad today. That whenever those who are in our community, even those who are in this community, stand in need that the church can rise up Amen. and say, I can help you. How can we do that? Because we bring our tithe and our offering. Amen. 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 Support your church. Amen. Give to God what belongs to him. You just never know, y'all. One day, it could be you. Amen. You're right, Pastor. Am I right about it? You're right about it. Pastor. One day you up. Yes, sir. <laughs> Next day, yeah. you're down. Amen. I'm telling you, it could be your situation soon. So it's, it's best that now we begin to bring back to God what he has given to us Amen. by way of our financial gifts Amen. to the church. He told Israel, recognize the problem mm -hmm. in your journey from curse to blessing. Yes, yes. Secondly, receive the principle. Uh -huh. But thirdly and finally, he said, rely on the promise. Mm -hmm. Rely on the promise. Look at 10b, the second part of 10b, 10b on to uh, verse 12. Mm -hmm. Watch what God said. God says to them, I've told you yes, sir. what I'm going to do. Bring the tithe. Mm -hmm. Bring the offering. Yes, then look what he said. He said, test me in this. Mm -hmm. in, 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 the, in the King James, it says, prove me. Mm -hmm. In other translations, it may say, try me. Yeah. Test me in this, says the Lord Almighty. And see if I will not throw open mm -hmm. the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing yes, that you would not have room enough to store it. What you going to do, God? I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops yes, and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is right, says the Lord Almighty. Verse 12, then all the nations will call you what? Blessed, for yours will be a delightful land. My brother says, if you ever had any doubt that God is merciful, you need to take away those doubts right now. Amen. You need to dispel those doubts that God is merciful. Here is a bunch of people yeah. who are disobedient to the commands of God. They are stubborn and they are unrepentant. 
They deserve the curse or the punishment that God has brought upon them. But look at what God does. He doesn't throw them away. He gives them another chance to get it right. Amen. He says to them, test me. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. He says to them, try yes, me. The word test in the verse means to examine. Amen. It means to scrutinize. It means to prove as you have in the King James. Uh -huh. What makes this verse significant, don't miss this, is the fact that this is the only time in the Bible yes, where the words test me come from God. Amen. From Genesis yes, to Revelation, yes, this is the only time yes, God says to his people, test me. Amen. You know for a fact that God is always testing other people, right? Yes, he tested Adam and Eve. He tested Moses. He tested Abraham. He tested Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. He tested Job. But now in Malachi chapter 3, verse 10, he said, test me. Prove me. He put his name on the line because God knows he can be trusted. Well, God, what would happen if we trust you? What would happen if if we bring our tithes and our offerings to your storehouse. Look what he said. I will open, <laughs> and King James says windows, and NIV said the floodgates of heaven and pour out so much blessing that there will not, that there will not be room enough to store it. Now, watch how God, how God sets this up. We know that we ought to, the children of Israel ought to bring the tithes and the offerings into the storehouse, which is a part of the temple. Amen. The storehouse has the capacity to keep all the first fruits from the entire area in the storehouse. Got no problem putting it in there. But look at how God creates the image for them. Mm -hmm. He said, Israel, if you obey me, I will give you so many blessings. You see that storehouse in the temple that got all that stuff in it? I will give you so many blessings that you won't have room to store it. In other words, your blessings will be overflowing. All you've got to do, Israel, is just obey me. Amen. Oh, my brothers and sisters, this is a lesson on obedience. It's a lesson on trusting God. God said, I will prevent the pests from devouring your crops, and the vines in your field will not drop their fruit before it is ripe, says the Lord Almighty. Then all the nations will call you blessed, for yours will be a delightful land, says the Lord Almighty. Now notice that the blessing that God is giving them is within the context of their culture, Amen. because this was an agrarian or an agricultural-based uh, 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 community or culture that's how they made their living. In other words, God said to them, I will make your lands rich. Amen. I will make your fruit bear. I will make everything you work on succeed because you will be a blessed nation. And everybody else will look at you and say, you are blessed. Amen. All you've got to do, Israel, trust me. Amen. All you've got to do is obey me Amen. and I will keep my word and bless you. Amen. There has been here lately so much discussion about tithing and offering. Amen. I'm not going to delve into that argument. Mm -hmm. All I would ask us to do <coughs> is just look at the, 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 the principle. Bring 
what belongs to God. Amen. You are, in essence, not giving it to West Hyattsville. Amen. Stay with me. You're giving it to God. Amen. But West Hyattsville, or whatever church you attend, is the house of God. And if God is in that house, if you believe that, that that house, that church has been established by God, then that is where you give back to God. You give it through your church. Amen. So that there will be meat in his house. Oh, my brothers and sisters, let us be obedient. Let us do what the Lord has told us to do. And there are enough witnesses yes, sir. in this house today Amen. who can tell you God is true to his word. Amen. Anybody here know what I'm talking about? Yes. And many of us in here today who know that even when we didn't have enough, yes, the old folks used to say we didn't have two nickels to rub together. Amen. We still trusted God. And guess what happened? God kept his promise. God was true to his word. You remember when you thought you had so much in your bank account and you went and checked and discovered you had more than you thought. I'm telling you, God knows how to bless us in the time of our need. All he says to us, trust me, try me, and look and see if I will open the floodgates and pour our blessings. So much that you won't have Amen. room enough to receive. Yes, and sometimes it will seem impossible. Sometimes the task will seem improbable. Yes. Sometimes people will tell you you're crazy. Amen. You don't need to be giving all that to that church. Amen. You let them know. I'm giving it to God. Amen. And the God who promised to open the windows, the floodgates of heaven, I'm trusting that God. Amen. I ain't trusting the preacher man or the preacher woman. No, I'm trusting God to make a way Amen. for me. And many of us here know he's a way maker. He, he's a door opener. But he says to us, trust me. Amen. Story is told of a guy who was hiking and he came upon a cliff and he had nowhere else to turn. And he just got scared, he got started crying. He said, he started praying to God, God help me. I'm on the, this cliff. I'm going to fall and die. God, save me. And a voice came from beyond the clouds. And uh, uh, the voice said to the man, jump, and I'll catch you. Jump, and I'll catch you. And the man, and the man looked up at the cloud and said, is there anybody else up there? <laughs> you see, my brothers and sisters, when we test God and we try God, guess what's going to happen? He's going to test us and try us as well. If we are going to walk around here talking about that, that he's a way maker, he, he's this and he's that, one day God is going to say, oh, yeah, if that's how you call me, then I'm going to test you. And my brothers and sisters, you just got to do what he said. Trust him. Amen. And when you do, wait and see what God is going to do in your life. The principal entire lesson from this is trust God with your resources. Amen. And when you trust him with your resources and do what he has said to do, it is a fact because, again, there are many witnesses here 
who would tell you, God will bless you because you obeyed his command. Somebody give God the praise. <laughs> Trust and obey, for there's no other way to be happy in Jesus but the trust and obey. If you're here today, here is another opportunity for you to trust and obey the voice of God. If you're here today without knowing this God, without knowing our Jesus, without a relationship with him, we invite you today to come and receive Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. If you're here and you know that God is not in your life, that Jesus is not your Savior, you don't have a relationship with him, we invite you to come, open your heart, and let Jesus come in and save you Amen. and restore you and bring you back into a relationship with God. If you're here today and you are saved, you are saved, you do have a relationship with God, but you do not have a church home. You do not have a church family that you can call your own. We invite you to come and join us here at the West Highestville Baptist Church. Listen, I'll be the first to say we are not a perfect church, but we are serving who? A perfect God. And as we serve him, he leads us in the way that we should go. So if you don't have a church that you belong to, we ask you, we invite you to come be a part of us. Come grow with us. Come go with us. Let us learn together. Let us serve together. Because God has given each of us something to do. This is the invitation for salvation. And this is the invitation for membership. Will you come as we open the doors of the church? Would there be anyone who will come today either to be saved or to become a member of our church? You may come at this time. But to trust. Is there one who will come? Well, there's no other way. you so much that your presence here today is no accident. God meant for you to be here on this day. He has a purpose for our lives. And your presence here today, I don't know your, I may not know your name, where you came from, but your presence here today is no accident. Amen. And God says to you right now, respond to this invitation, either to be saved or to become a member of this church. If you are watching by way of Facebook or listening, you can also respond by calling us, letting us know, sending us an email that either you have accepted the invitation to salvation or that you would like to become a member of our church. To God be the glory. Great things he has done. Amen? Amen. Amen. I would like to ask now if there are any first-time visitors here today, please stand. If this is your first time worshiping at West Highsville Baptist Church, please stand. Amen. I see one such face. Thanks, God. <laughs> <laughs> I know I saw one. <laughs> Amen. Remain standing, remain standing. Uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> 
uh, our usher is coming. And just one more thing, and this won't hurt you, I promise. There's a young lady holding a mic. <laughs> and we need just to tell us your name, who brought you, and anything else you would like us to know about. Amen, amen, amen. Tab, Tiambi, Tiambi. Last Sunday was Tiambi's first time here. Amen. So this is Tiambi's second time here, and guess what she did? She brought some. Oh, I love it, I love it, I tell you what. Listen, we're so happy to have you today. Thank you for coming and worshiping with us. And we pray that you will come back again yeah. Yeah. and visit us here. We are a friendly church. We are a church that believes in worshiping God, serving God. And whenever anyone comes and visits us, we feel so honored. Amen. And we are blessed by your presence on today. Amen. 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 Come on, let's give God praise. <laughs> Amen. Now, it is time for us. I told you I wasn't going to get a lot of amen. <laughs> it's time for us to bring back unto God what belongs to him. Amen. After that sermon, that should be pretty, pretty easy. Amen. Amen. amen? I didn't preach it for that purpose. You get me, don't get me wrong, but it's in the word of God. Amen. And case you don't know it, I preach the word. Amen. That's, that's, that's all I have. I preach what's in the Amen. word. Father, we thank you for this time of giving. Thank we you, thank Lord. you for the ministry of stewardship. Thank you for what you have taught us today. We ask now that you will please bless these gifts that are about to be given. That they will be multiplied and used in kingdom building. This is our prayer. We pray in Jesus' name. Let us all say together. Amen. Amen. Our ushers are coming and we are going to give at this time. Y'all know this song, so come on, sing along.
certainly hope and pray that this service has been a blessing uh, to your life. Uh, like I said, each Sunday we come together, we worship God, but now also we hear a word from God and we go forth to apply what we have learned. And so we pray that this has truly been a blessing. Every aspect of this worship has been a blessing to you Amen. on this day. Remember that on tomorrow morning at 6.30 a.m., uh, we will come together for our morning meditation beginning uh, again, at 6.30 a.m., the conference call number and the passcodes are on the bulletin you have. Um, if you are watching us, you can go to our website, uh, whbchurch.org, and you will find that information on the opening page um, for our um, conference call number and passcode. And then on Wednesday, uh, we will come together again, but this time at 6.30 p.m., for another meditation and prayer uh, service. And then our Bible study begins at 7 uh, p.m. We are still in the book of Second Peter. We're in chapter 3. Uh, I do believe we will be concluding uh, Second Peter on this coming Wednesday. So please uh, read ahead. Uh, as I always say, write down any questions, any observations, any reflections you may have. And let us come together to study the word of God. Until then, may God bless you as you go throughout this week. Uh, please keep all those whose names were mentioned who are on the bulletin. Uh, please lift them up in a special way. Uh, uh, Sister Mary Cheer and her family, and then also the family of uh, Mr. Robert Gibson. Continue to remember our friends in uh, the Haitians in Springfield, uh, Ohio, and uh, pray for this country, not only this country, but countries around the world. Uh, where there's trouble everywhere. And pray that God will bring peace as we continue to serve him. Amen. Amen. We have met to worship. Now let us leave to serve. Let us stand. Gracious and merciful God, we have heard your word today. We have received your challenge today. Help us now in our journey in life that as we come upon any situations that may be challenging to us, that we remember to recognize the problem, to receive the principle, and to rely on your promise. Help us to be faithful in our giving. Help us to trust you because we know that in all things, you do all things well. We declare today, God, that we trust you. You have not failed us, but you have been faithful, faithful to us. And for that, we say thank you. We ask now as we go through the rest of this day that you grant us your grace, grant us your peace. We pray as we go through this week, oh God, you travel with us everywhere we go and in our homes, our jobs, in our communities. God, may we represent you in such a way that someone will ask, what must I do to get what you have? <laughs> to get the joy and the peace and the smile on your face. And God, when they ask us, let us be able to share the gospel, to tell them, oh, it is Jesus. Amen. Yes, it is. It is Jesus in my soul. For I have touched the hem of his garment. 
and his blood has made me whole. And now may the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide in our hearts from now henceforth and forevermore. Let us all say together, Amen. Amen. God bless you. We'll see you next Sunday. Have a wonderful week. Uh, Wes Hyers, please greet our visitor. Please greet our visitor before she leaves.